Hi, I'm Lance Henriksen. You're watching Brian Lomax's Movie Talk. Hello and welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk and my Q&A. That's right, I got 500 subscribers, past the 500 subscribers mark just a couple of weeks ago. And I put out a video asking you guys to submit questions for this Q&A. So let's begin. Now Rob Ryan and Adelans456 both kind of asked the same question. Adelans456 asked... What would be the one movie that I would like to watch before I die? Um, I'm, I'm assuming that's imminent death and I get the chance to sit down and watch whichever movie I want. Uh, and Rob asks which three? So I'll, I'll do the three and that will kind of answer both questions at once. Uh, I, I wish I had a, I don't know, a great philosophical answer to give you here for this one, but Let's face it, if I'm about to die, I'm going to watch the Dark Knight trilogy again. It's my, they're my favourite movies. Um, they're, they're also quite long. Uh, they get consecutively longer. Um, so, you know, give me a bit more time on the earth while we're here. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be the Dark Knight trilogy. And if not, okay, let's, if, if you want something a bit, you know, I guess a smarter answer, something that makes me look upon my life or whatever... I'd go with The Dark Knight, <laughs> because that is my favourite film. I'd have to get that in there as one of the three. Uh, Magnolia, because it it's a bit of a dark film in many ways. It shows the, the darker side of humanity, but it also leaves you with quite a bit of hope in humanity. So it leaves me a little bit hopeful, I guess, of what I was leaving behind, the people I was leaving behind, hope that they could maybe do better. Um, and the final one, I guess, would be Dead Man Walking, because that's a film that kind of makes you feel, again, hopeful, despite all the darkness in it. Um, it the difference being, it makes you feel hopeful that no matter what you do in life, no, no matter the, the, the wrong turns you take, there is still hope that... If you have a repentant heart, then you're going to meet your maker. Um, and that's about as as religious as I'll get, I guess. Um, which I feel you kind of have to do, in, to some extent, if you're talking about death. Rachel Wagner asks, What is an animated film you love? And what animated films do you like watching with your daughter? Or what films? Not necessarily just animated films, but what films do you like watching with your daughter? Of course, I do have a two-year-old daughter. But she's not really at the age yet where she wants to watch films with me, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting till she gets to that age. But I've, I've got a horrible feeling she's not going to be the film-watching type. She's too active. She doesn't... Yeah. Aside from Peppa Pig and Elmo... Oof. Yeah, she, yeah. I, I'm hoping her viewing habits will change very soon, to be honest. Um, but I'm looking forward to watching films with her like The Iron Giant and um, Beauty and the Beast and hopefully one day Batman the Animated Series, um, Batman Mask of the Phantasm if you're talking movies. But yeah, at the moment, nothing. <laughs> but as for the, the animated film that I love, yeah, Iron Giant is, is just a really great animated film. There are, of course, a lot... Um, Batman Mask of the Phantasm is the obvious choice for me, given my Batman fandom. But, hmm, yeah, any, most films by Pixar, except for Cars, I really didn't like Cars. I, I've tried to watch it a few times, I just find it quite dull, to be honest. Uh, but Ratatouille, Wally, -E, Incredibles, all great films. Toy Story trilogy, obviously. Uh, and, and as for Disney, be be you know, it's the obvious ones. Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, Aladdin and Little Mermaid. Th those four films, obviously not in that order uh, in which they were released. Um, those four films were kind of like Disney at their peak, weren't they? It's like they, they just had a string of, of films, late 80s, early 90s, boom, Disney was just like cranking out the, the classics. Um, but yeah... That's it for animated films. And next couple of questions are from Annie Time, a really great YouTuber. She doesn't always talk about movies, but she has a really good personality. So go and check out her channel if you've not seen anything of hers. Uh, the first question she asks is, 
If you could replace one of your friends with uh, someone from a, well, 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 the character from a movie or a TV series, who would it be? I'm, I'm assuming she's not asking which friend would I replace, but which character would it be? Um, I would go with Fox Mulder because, I mean, I've, I've recently done uh, a stint watching the recent X Files series, the season 10 that they've just done. Uh, but that really reminded me of just how much I like that character. Uh, I've been a huge X-Files fan right since day one, since it was first broadcast. And I always loved the character of Fox Mulder because he's a loser. <laughs> he's not a traditional leading character. He, you know, everybody that he works with doesn't really respect him all that much. They don't like, they don't respect him because of the, the, the path he's taken in his career. They, they always hurl insults at him, but it's like water off a duck's back, and he always seems to latch on to the freaks and weirdos, and I don't mean just because he's uh, like looking at the X-Files, but when he comes across characters that I, I guess are outcasts in society, he always seems, I don't know, at home with them. He, he always seems to befriend them quite well and, and doesn't judge them ever. Uh, so yeah, he, he's a good character, I think. One of the best characters, I think, in fiction. One of my favourites, anyway. Uh, and probably the, the guy that I would want to hang around with uh, if I could choose to and, and ditch one of my friends. There you go. <laughs> the second question from Annie is, do you have any TV shows or movies that affected how you looked at the world um, or how you coped with certain situations. Um, going back to one that I, I just mentioned, Dead Man Walking actually challenged me a bit. I mean, we don't have the death penalty over here in the UK, thank God, uh, we used to. But yeah, that film really cemented my opinions, my views on the death penalty as a whole. I think if you'd have asked my 20-year-old self, I'd, I'd have maybe been more of the kind of eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth kind of guy. Um, but now, um, after, after watching that film and then after reading the book on which it is based, I'm just absolutely flat out against the death penalty, totally. Um, I could not be more against it if I tried. So I guess that you know that shaped my opinions, shaped my views. Um, I don't know about a film or TV show that's impacted how I cope with certain situations. Um, I don't know. I just I just cope with situations as they come. Uh, but certainly, yeah, films have changed my views. They have shaped my views, and Dead Man Walking is definitely one of them. So Tim from the Late Reviews has five questions. The first one being. How did I go about directing my movie? Um, and he wants me to take you through the process. Uh, the, the film that he's referring to is The Life and Times of the Real Robin Hood. It is a documentary film, a very low budget documentary film. We shot it for £600 and then the distribution costs were £1,400. So total budget of £2,000 to get 1,000 copies of the film out on DVD. Uh, but yeah, how did I come about making it? Well, in my third year of university, I did a uh, TV production degree. Uh, it's a media degree with TV production. Uh, I made my final piece, my end of year piece in, in year three, uh, with a chap called Mark Olley. Uh, he's a historian, archaeologist, and he helped us make a historical documentary about this church uh, in my hometown uh, where, where I lived obviously because that's what a hometown is but that was in like 2006 and I hadn't seen him for, for years and we kind of bumped into each other at this event and we just got chatting asked each other what we were up to I told him I'd sell my own production company he told me he had all these projects but no one was really biting so I just said well why don't we do one? Why, why don't we take one of your projects, take one of your script ideas and, and, and run with it? So we met up at his house, we discussed the various projects that he had, the things that he'd written, and I latched on mostly to the Robin Hood idea, just because, I, I don't know, I guess I thought it was a character that was uh, quite sellable, I guess, quite marketable, um, someone that everybody knows. 
Uh, yeah, and I thought we could do something with it, I guess, uh, given the budget constraints that we had, in that we had no money. Um, and yeah, so we got we got the ball rolling on that. We met up again for uh, three days straight. We scripted it out based on all his research. He'd done like about 10 years worth of research and we turned that into a script, most of which he'd already scripted, uh, to be honest. Um, I, I just helped kind of put it into like we both kind of like worked together to put it into a structure a structure that would work on film after that we just literally set about running off to locations shooting various bits and we set aside a couple of days for reenactments mark knows a lot of reenactment groups who were willing to help us for free uh, and yeah we we scripted a few reenactment bits got the got the people in got the groups in shot them they were they were the most fun part of the film i'd say um they it was more of a a drama kind of uh route to take i guess which which would be more like my my kind of up my street a bit more i think i'd, I'd like to to direct a a proper kind of dramatic feature film with actors one day so that that gave me a bit of that a flavor of that um but yeah that's it really uh that we edited it we put a package together on dvd sent it to the dvd authoring companies and then that's it whacked it on amazon.co.uk and there it is uh and it's yeah that's it that's how you make a film <laughs> second question from tim is hobbies outside of movies gotta say there aren't a right lot uh Struggling to think. Music, obviously, and we'll get to that um, in one of your next questions. But, yeah, if, if I read, it tends to be about movies. Uh, if I go out to do anything, it tends to be maybe to shoot a film or go to the cinema. I, I don't know. I I literally don't have any other hobbies besides movies. I'm, uh, I'm that sad. Next question from Tim is, well... First, he starts off with a statement. He says he notices I have a Linkin Park CD on my rack here. But he wants to know what other music I'm into. Uh, this is just a small selection, really small selection of my music, to be honest. Uh, I, I do have tons of CDs, but they're all my mum and dad's. They kind of ended up there when I moved house, and they seem to have just stayed there. But Because everything's, you know, you get a CD, you put it on your iTunes, and that's it. You never really listen to it as a hard copy anymore, so... Yeah, they've stayed at my mum and dad's. Uh, but Muse are my favourite band. Um, they, they've they been my favourite band for the past 16 years or so. The, yeah, I, I've had quite a lot of favourite bands over the years, but you kind of out-listen them. For whatever reason, I've never out-listened Muse. They bring a new album out and I, I still love them. I just love the sound. Absolutely brilliant band. Uh, quite a few other bands. Uh, Airborne Toxic Event are a band I really love. Um, the the guy who writes the songs for them, he's a really great lyricist. Uh, kind of one of those lyricists where you listen to the the words and you just like, if you're trying to sing along, it's kind of hard to sing along to because the, the lyrics are just real like really dense kind of uh, thing. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Airborne Toxic Event, if you don't know them, check them out, really great band. Temper Trap is another band I really love. Uh, they're fa most famous for a song called Sweet Disposition, but they've had two al two other albums out since uh, the album that that song was off, and they're really good. Uh, James, I've been a big fan of for a long time. Again, they're another band that get remembered for one song, Sit Down, but they've had like over 10 albums like i think something like 14 albums out or something like that in the past 20 years so yeah they're more than that one song um yeah really love them yeah plenty of bands uh like, like i say lincoln park the who i this uh, who's next is the who's best album excellent album um fleet foxes Lindsay Buckingham from uh, Fleetwood Mac fame. He's one of my favourite guitarists. Yeah, the, the list goes on. There's plenty, I'm sure, that I'm, I'm leaving out, but there you go. That's, that's it for that one. Tim's next question is, how about some Blu-rays? Uh, by that, I'm assuming he means because you can only see behind me DVDs. I have a lot of DVDs, um, but I'm starting to build my Blu-ray collection. I don't have anywhere near as many Blu-rays. They're up here, just off-camera. 
don't have anywhere near as many Blu-rays as I do DVDs. But I, I have kind of recently stopped buying DVDs and I do, I'm, I'm trying to just buy Blu-rays now and I'm trying to just buy ones that I actually really want. Um, that kind of goes out the window when I go into an entertainment exchange, which is a shop over here in the UK that kind of buys DVDs off you and also tra you know, so trades them, kind of trades them in and stuff. Uh, and, but they sell them really cheap. So if I see a film that I've not seen before, on the on the uh, on the rack and i'm thinking you know what that's a good price that's less than the price of a rental i may as well get it which i which i have done with a with a few of the blu-rays on on my shelf but i am trying to just buy movies that i really want to keep now um because it gets a bit ridiculous to be honest when you when you're owning really stupid titles i mean i, I can pull a, a load off the back of here i'm sure um yeah, like I mean, Dangerous Minds. It's a good film, but am I really gonna? Yeah, you know, I. Yeah, I don't think I really need that in my collection. Um, yeah, but that's it. So I, I will be doing a Blu-ray video, I think, uh, sometime soon, Tim. So uh, you'll get to see my Blu-ray collection then. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. I, I know I did a complete DVD and Blu-ray collection video a while back. That was in like three parts but I want to restart kind of with just my Blu-rays. So I'm going to do a complete Blu-ray collection video and then I'll do updates as and when I get new Blu-rays. So there you go, look out for that in the near future. So Tim's final question is, do American movies portray the UK appropriately? And the answer I would say is no, not quite. Uh, there are a few representations of, of you know, like, like decent representations of British people in American movies. But on the whole, I tend to find that Americans portray us as if we're all still kind of aristocratic snobs with really posh southern accents. We all talk like this. And most of the places I go to in the UK, we don't talk like this at all. We're really kind of common and, and speak with ums and ahs. Yeah, so we don't talk like that. So please stop portraying us like that in your movies because that's not how the majority of us speak. Okay. Steve from The Law Gnome asks, if you could meet any of the actors to have played or voiced Batman uh, on the TV or movies throughout the years, who would it be? Uh, this is a really hard question because it depends do you want to meet these guys so that you can tell them what you think or do you want to meet them because you want to hang out with them if it's to hang out with them I'm thinking either Adam West or George Clooney are actually going to be the best of the guys to have played Batman to hang out with because they're both quite self-deprecating um yeah I think George Clooney would be a fun guy to hang about with uh he he openly admits how bad Batman and Robin was. It's probably either going to be Christian Bale, um, but he's I'd imagine him to be quite a prickly character to try and talk to. I don't know. Um, but I, I'd, yeah, I'd love to just sit down with him and just tell him why I love his Batman more than any other. And Kevin Conroy, who obviously voices the character of Batman in the Arkham games, but most notably in Batman the Animated Series. Um, just, yeah, what an interpretation of Batman that is. The animated series version of Batman is probably the single greatest interpretation of Batman. Um, and I, I mean, I will always take the Dark Knight trilogy version of Batman just because it's live action. Um, I, that's, that's, it probably sounds really snobbish. That's the snob in me, I think, just coming out there. Um, but yeah. One of those two, either Christian Bale or Kevin Conroy. It's a really hard question to answer because it depends what mood I'm in and what I want to say to them and what I want to do with them, I guess. Matthew Aronholt asks, if I could go back in time to the making of any movie, which film would it be? And I'm going to say Batman Returns. Uh, I would like to have been there during the making of Batman, the first Tim Burton one, but... Yeah, Batman Returns. It's got Catwoman in it, Michelle Pfeiffer. And I, I'm assuming I'm the age that I was. Uh, I, that's, there's no reason from your question that I would assume this, but I'm, I'm assuming I'm the age I was. I'm putting that stipulation on there. If I was the age that I was when I saw Batman Returns, 
then I would have loved to have been on the set of that movie. Just loved it. Um, beyond that, I, I, I'd probably like to have been on the set of Magnolia, just because I'd love to see the way Paul Thomas Anderson worked up close. I'd love to see the making of that film up close. There's a pretty decent making of documentary on the DVD for that. But yeah, what a film. Um, I, I think you could learn an awful lot from watching Paul Thomas Anderson at work in the making of that film and the actors obviously the late great Philip Seymour Hoffman being one of the actors in that film as well so yeah I'd love to have been on set of Magnolia. Matthew also asks if you could remake any film which film would it be? Now I answered this question I think in a previous Q&A that I did um, and I said Wings of Honey Ammies which is like a manga film that really had quite an impact on me and I think it would do really well as a live action film, something the kind of thing that James Cameron might direct. But failing that, Critters. I'd, I'd like to see a remake of Critters. It's, it's still a really great film, I think, the original, but not many people really know of it. It's one of those kind of unsung hero franchises. I think it's right for the remake. I think they could do really well with a modern audience if they tweaked it a bit, kind of made it a bit more, I don't know, yeah bit more modern, a bit more for the modern audience. Um, I think they could get a decent franchise out of it if they did it well. Uh, give it to the guy who did Krampus. I think he'd do pretty well uh, remaking Critters. I think he'd do a good job of it. So there you go. That is the end of my Q&A. I just need to say thank you to everyone who left questions for that video. And thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. I wouldn't even be making this video if I hadn't reached 500 subscribers. So I just need to thank you guys for, for, for subscribing to my channel. And especially to those of you who do actually watch my videos. Um, I really appreciate it. You're the reason I keep on doing this. So yeah, I hope you stick around for the long haul, however long that may be. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate it, really do appreciate it. But yeah, that's the end of the Q&A, so until next time, thanks for watching.